So he, uh, he told her he loved her. And she believed him. She was 18 years old from a tiny village in Mexico. And when he told her that he loved her, he said that she should go to Mexico City with him because that's where she could make money for her family, make money cleaning homes. And her village in Mexico was so tiny that the money that she made cleaning homes was a lot of money for her family in Mexico. And he told her again that he loved her. She thought that this was her boyfriend. And he said, we can make even more money in New York together. How would she get to New York? Well, he told her he knew a way. So he got her to New York City. This 18-year-old from a tiny village in Mexico, New York City. But he wouldn't let her out of the apartment. In the apartment he had her there with who he called his aunt. He said, here, you just follow, the, follow my aunt around. She'll tell you what to do. And she actually started getting bored, because all she would do is sit in this apartment. And finally, after she kept begging to, to work, to do something, he told her again, well, just follow my aunt. And the aunt told her about the game and how for $40, a sex act, she could get money to be sent back to Mexico. Well, she's stuck in New York City. She has no friends. She doesn't know anything. She doesn't know the language. She told him she didn't want to. He told her she had no choice. She did what she was told. Now, she told her that she loved him, that she loved her. The she in this one was her mother. She was 13 years old. The local drug dealer asked the mother for an exchange. More drugs for your daughter. The mother thought this was a fair deal. She was 13 years old. She knew no better. Turned out the local drug dealer knew the local pimp. Sold her to the local pimp. She was from Baltimore. Local pimp took her to Washington, D.C. Promised her and gave her all the material things that she had never seen before in her life. The clothes were fancier than what she'd known before. The shoes were fancier. She suddenly had a, a group of friends, also known as a stable. She learned the game. She was put out on the street. She walked the streets. She watched the physical abuse of the other girls in the stable. She was hit and sexually assaulted herself by the pimp. He, like her mother, told her that he loved her. She believed him. She had no choice. I mention these two cases not because they're any different from all the cases that you've heard about already today, but because these are two of the cases that I've been involved with. These two she's, these two young women, horribly damaged by what was done to them. They were exploited, they were discarded. But these same scenarios happen every day, everywhere across America, everywhere across the world. They happen on the street corners, they happen in the country clubs, they happen in the hotels, they happen on the farms, they happen in the industries, they happen everywhere. Everywhere we turn, there is some person who is being exploited. Some of them are hidden from sight, some of them are right in front of us. It doesn't matter their color, their religion, their race, their gender, their national origin. They are the survivors. 